My name is Lavon Bell. I'm a visual artist from the Virgin Islands based in St. Croix. My work typically deals with the colonial legacy of the Virgin Islands and I work with reinterpreting the narratives. Um, in terms of my material, I work in different disciplines. I work in photography, installation, painting, and sculpture. My name is Jeanette Ehlers and I'm a visual artist from Denmark with Caribbean roots. And my work deals with um, the Danish participation in the enslavement trade and uh, the colonial legacy and the Scandinavian uh, colonial amnesia. Um, I work mainly within the fields of performance, video and photo. We are working on a collaborative public art project. It's entitled I Am Queen Mary and the project was inspired because last year in March of 2017 was the 100th anniversary of the sale and transfer of the Virgin Islands from Denmark to the United States and this momentous occasion brought on a lot of questions on how to commemorate it. Well, they were things like parades and exhibitions and symposiums and we definitely wanted to add to that conversation by having this sculpture project um, and especially develop something that was permanent and that was also a critical dialogue. I wanted to make a, a sculpture that was a site-specific sculpture in the city of Copenhagen in front of the Royal Cast Collection which was built as uh, the West Indian warehouse. In front of the Royal Cast Collection, there's a huge uh, copy of Michelangelo's David. And I Am Queen Mary is going to um, be uh, next to David to contest the Western European art history and tradition. We decided to combine our two projects into one project. The physical figure of I Am Queen Mary uh, derives from a performance I did uh, called Whip It Good, which I performed inside of the warehouse. And uh, it's a performance in which I whip a white canvas with uh, a whip uh, smeared in um, black charcoal. And I also took a photo inside of the warehouse in which I sit in a peacock chair with the whip in my hand. Uh, inspired by um, the image, the iconic image of the, one of the founders of Black Panther, Hugh P. Newton, sitting in a pe peacock chair with his um, uh, spear in one hand and a rifle in another hand. Right, but then we decided to, instead of having the whip, we decided to change um, what she had in her hands. So in one of her hands she has what's called a cane bill, which is what was used to cut sugar cane. Um, in the plantations in the Virgin Islands and the other object is a torch um, and that was inspired because both of those things were actually colonial tools that people took and used them as tools of resistance. So I had done a piece that was called Trading Post and it was taking the corals from the foundations of some of the historical structures in the Virgin Islands that were from the colonial era. These coral stones were taken out of the ocean by enslaved Africans who were sent to harvest them. And what's interesting about them is that they form the foundation of the buildings, but you often don't see that because they're covered over typically with Danish bricks on top. So I really wanted to help to visualize this labor and their hands, but also to make visible uh, the true wealth and foundation of the colonial legacy. Mary uh, takes as his point of departure a, a historical figure. Her name was Mary Thomas. She was one of the th three other women who led the largest labor revolt in Danish colonial history um, in St. Croix and in the Virgin Islands. We know of it as the Feyerbond. And it began on October 1st, 1878. And she, along with the other women, they were taken to Denmark and they were imprisoned. Um, their sentences were commuted and then they were returned to the Virgin Islands and when they were returned they were living legends. We sing songs about Queen Mary, she emerged as the most popular and we even have a highway named after her. Yeah and in Denmark she is not well known at all. We don't know this legacy, we don't know her legacy so this is a good way to introduce 
or to give conscience to um, the Danish people and to the rest of the world um, about um, Queen Mary's legacy and the, fire, the queens of the Fireburn. And also, this is a way to um, uh, highlight uh, the symbols of resistance, which Queen Mary definitely is. The sculpture is made by combining our two physical likenesses into one. Um, and we did this by doing a 3D body scan of both of our bodies. And then using software technology, we, combi we, create, we combine them to create a, a hybrid woman, um, a new woman that is kind of a combination of both of our bodies, our nations, and our narratives. Yeah, and we wanted to do that because um, this project is about bridging and it's about um, acknowledging each other and the nations and um, it just seems so right to to combine our bodies in that regard because um, yeah it's reaching out we were also really thinking a lot about what does it mean to embody a uh, heroine we were also really thinking about speaking into other resistance histories like for example when i lived in cuba um, all the children used to have to say seremos como el Che, like we will be like Che Guevara, thinking about aligning yourself and wanting to be like a particular hero. Um, it's speaking into that famous placard from the 1960s sanitation workers strike that says, I am a man. It's also thinking about the famous um, last scene in Malcolm X, Spike Lee's movie about Malcolm X, where he has children all around the world um, say, I am Malcolm X. And we wanted people to really think about what does that mean to embody this history? What does that mean? Uh, what is your relationship to this history? What's your position to this history? So when you look at the sculpture, of course you're gonna be thinking, who is she? And in some ways she answers that by saying, I am Queen Mary. Yeah, and the project um, is a project about bridging. Um, that's why we wanted to, it, it seemed really obvious to bridge our bodies. Um, because we wanted to combine um, our, our art projects, but we also wanted to to combine our backgrounds, our, our histories, our narratives. Uh, but it's also a project that talks and speaks into the diaspora. So that why that is why it was so um, crucial for us to to mix and to combine our bodies. A lot of the sculptures in the public space in Denmark are of white males. And so this sculpture is of black women. <laughs> it's, um, you know, I think that it's going to definitely mean something for people to see this colossal. It really is um, a monumental sculpture dedicated not just to resistance, but also of, you know, it's a sculpture about female empowerment, I think, too. Mm -hmm, definitely. And it's also created by females, you know, that's mm -hmm. another dimension to it. So um, it's a big manifestation. You know, a lot of sculptures arrive in the public space by being commissioned by an institution. And that wasn't the case for I Am Queen Mary. Um, we decided on our own that we wanted to push into the public space and to kind of claim that space um yeah you know, just like the, the the queens of the fireburn they took they claimed their space they claimed their rights that's what we're doing now in a symbolic way of course but we do it and it, it's in the same spirit yeah but i think it's more than in, in a symbolic way too mm -hmm. because you know it's it means something that we're two black female artists that you know, in, in terms of the art world, there's definitely not a lot of visibility. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also taking that space for ourselves as well. So I yeah. think that's significant too. Yeah, very much. Critics will say this is uh, African art. And? Is it African art? <laughs> <laughs> Just your email from yesterday. Really? That's African it, art? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you remember this guy saying yeah. this is Africa, Africa art? Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it was yeah. fun. It's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, it's been very uh, giving to collaborate mm -hmm. and um, 
to develop this project. Um, it's been so uh, eye-opening, I think, and mm -hmm. it's just been so um, yeah, it's just been so great to to go deep into history and process and with another another artist mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. I think what was fun for me, which was the surprising part for me, um, when Jeanette first asked me to collaborate on this project, I thought she meant to collaborate on our two previous ideas. Like, you know, she had a figure and I had a, a part of a sculpture that pretty much was effectively a base. And it was only until I got here that I realized, and she was like, okay, we're meeting the body scanner. <laughs> and I was like, body what? For what? <laughs> so, but that part actually was a lot of fun to do the body scanning and to see our two, you know, to just have a wand and then have our bodies be transformed into a screen and then have them merge. Um, it was almost like what our kids would look like if we had one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's been many yeah. hard decisions and many hard questions to to think about and um yeah it's been uh, it's been deep yeah i mean specifically what what do you think was hard because you you did a lot of the um on the ground asking for permissions and all of that like a lot of those yeah parts. that's been very hard too i mean to to raise the money to find out what uh, how this works since we're not commissioned we needed to find out everything on our own and uh, that's a hard process it's also been ongoing for the last four years mm -hmm. but um, yeah that's a that's a tough one but we're getting better <laughs> <laughs> no she's amazing <laughs> um, I think for me what's been hard is because since the project is occurring in Copenhagen and I live in St. Croix it's been hard sometimes to fully um, to fully engage in some of those aspects and um, you know I think that our partnership was really solidified when I spent three months here in 2017 um, and that's when we really got a chance to have all of those conversations mm -hmm. and um, and I got you know that's when the part the partnership I think was really solidified yeah definitely yeah. it's it's a little difficult to work on distance mm -hmm. actually but when you were here it we kind of yeah we got um we got a lot of things in place mm -hmm. and it started to develop and and uh bloom mm -hmm. when you were here so that was great <laughs> I had never collaborated with an artist before and I think that, you know, we're pretty, both of us are pretty self-directed and when you work in a collaborative project, you have to both agree <laughs> and you, mm -hmm. and so you're going to have to make certain compromises and um, I learned not to be scared of that process because I, I, I wasn't sure how that would be and it actually, almost every decision that we made together, it made the project stronger. Yeah, and it definitely um, opened up uh, the project in many ways and we also realized that we actually support each other very well and mm -hmm. we, um, we, we come in with different perspectives, different new dimensions and that, is very, that makes the project very strong.